Okay, guys, let's uh, let's create some custom device classes today. Device classes are what uh, are the system that we use to categorize devices or classify devices, so that you can see who the manufacturer and what the model number is of the device when you're looking at it in the device manager, uh, as well as device summary screen and a number of other places. When we're looking at these devices uh, on the system here. You can see that the device classes comprise uh, any number of uh, different manufacturers and, and kinds of things that we'll find on the network. But in some cases, the devices are not classified. In other words, they're, they're not given in a, a manufacturer, or maybe they are, but they're simply not given a specific model number. Um, we often see this um, in situations where we, we have uh, this original equipment manufacturer, OEM, uh, next to the manufacturer, sometimes we'll have nothing in here, which happens occasionally. But let's see how it is, how easy it is to walk through here and assign a custom device class to these devices and begin to classify devices on the network. If we choose one of these devices at random, this is a, this says it's a Cisco Systems OEM device category is unknown, but it tells me it's a router. Um, if I look at this device. Um, we can see that we've got a good system description that tells me it's a C2900. So I know the class of device, in this case, you know, Cisco is kind of well known. So I can see it's a, it's a 2900 uh, class device, but it comes up and it doesn't have a category as we saw in subclasses OEM. So all I know is it's a Cisco thing. Well, if we take a little bit deeper look under the covers, we, if we, can, we can go to the Mibwalker. Um, a little shortcut here is to click on the word physical device, and that'll take me to the Mibwalker and choose the MIB2 system table or the system MIB and walk that and we'll get a quick view of what this device thinks it is. So this is where the system description comes from but we'll also see the system object identifier and this is really what I care about. In the case of Cisco and many if not most other device manufacturers this system object identifier is used to uniquely identify the model number of device within the manufacturer's portfolio of devices. I'm just going to grab that OID and I'm going to go to my web browser and paste that in and uh, this will take me to the uh, Cisco products MIB and allow me to cross reference this. And we can actually see directly in the uh, in the overview here that the uh, the OID 1.1045 is associated with a Cisco 2911 but if we wanted to dive right in here and then just do a find and go down to 1045 then we'll see in this table that uh, that's a Cisco 2911 that corresponds to that OID so that's good to know because with that information, I can now create a custom device class and reclassify this device um, in order to give it its proper device name and device category. So let's go ahead and do that. We go to the System Customize Device Classes section of the product. If we do a quick search here on Cisco, we'll see that there are over a thousand current entries for Cisco. Uh, which is an awful lot, but for Cisco and for almost all other major equipment manufacturers, you're going to find that there is a fall-through category, and the fall-through category is called OEM. And so the OEM entry is used as a high-level entry for uh, matching if everything else falls through. So you'll see here we've got several different OEM entries. At the end of the day, if it identifies itself as 1361419 anything, it's going to be assigned Cisco Systems OEM. And that's what we saw with the, uh, the case that we had here. But here we know that it's a Cisco Systems 2911. And I'm just going to paste in the sys object ID. Pay particular attention to the fact that I did not use a beginning decimal in this sys object ID. This UI doesn't like to see a decimal uh, starting it, so make sure you don't put a, a beginning decimal in there. In some devices, 
the sys the sys object ID is not enough to uniquely distinguish this device because the manufacturer may use the same sys object ID for a number of the devices in their product portfolio but they may use enterprise MIB variables to distinguish amongst these. So if that's the case, then we have these other uh, options uh, in front of us here in order to check the value of other OIDs in addition to SysObject ID in order to get a finer uh, distinction between different devices. Anyhow, let's continue on. I'm going to assign the, uh, the Cisco router device icon to this and I'm going to classify it as a network router leave the standard MIB2 sys uptime and click on the save button and just like that we have added a custom device class now let's go back to our registry here um, we've got our list of devices with OEM labels we'll bring um, uh, we'll bring this guy into uh, into the front with his configuration screen and click on the ad hoc rediscovery button, the binoculars on here. Now depending on what your system is doing and how many different distributed components you have to it, this could take anywhere from 5 seconds to, uh, to 20 seconds or perhaps even a little bit longer. Uh, if you're pulling a lot of devices and uh, and this system is under heavy load. But at the end of the day, what we're looking for is for a successful rediscovery to take place. And you'll see here that we now have the new identity of a Cisco Systems 2911. Now if I click on the reset button here, I'm going to expect to see my icon change, my category change, and my subclass change. And this is what we've got. Now it's a Cisco router. It's got a network router category and a subclass of 2911. If I now update my screen here on this screen, then the branch A router disappears. And if I instead look for the text 2911, then you'll see here it is right here. Now it's a network router, Cisco Systems 2911. And if I click on his uh, events, then we'll see updating device with new class type, new class type 2911, old class type OEM. So uh, this event will expire um, in, uh, in a little while, but uh, everything worked according to plan. So uh, you know what, that was so fun, let's do another one. Um, here we can see we've got an F5 Labs OEM. Now I don't know what kind of device this is. Um, it's got uh, it's a Linux machine I know that and I can see it's running a 2.4 Linux kernel but I don't know a whole lot more than just that so let's do the same thing we did before let's look in the system MIB and find out uh, what the sys object ID returns for this device and see if we can get a little bit finer detail as to how we might want to, might want to describe this inside of EM7 so Here's our sys object ID 136141 33752 So I'm going to copy that out, go back and see what we can come up with. So the first entry on the list actually comes from the F5 Big IP system MIB. And uh, let's see, 21346. If we take a look at this and search for 21346, it tells us this is a big IP 3400. So I'll just grab that and uh, go back here to my custom device classes and we'll create another one. Let's see what we call this inside EM7. We just call it F5 Labs. So I'll we'll call this F5 Labs and I'm just going to paste in my, oops, that's not what I want. I want to put that up here. Big IP 3400. And I think I left my OID sitting over in my other window here. Yep, I sure did. So I'll grab that OID and pop that down in here. Now, the question comes as to um, what we want to classify this device as. We may or may not uh, have a, an icon, but I think we've got an icon for F5 didn't just scream past me there. But as far as device category, um, 
we, we need to kind of make a decision as to how we want to classify this device. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how we want to classify this device, so for right now, uh, let's put this in as a I'm going to put this in as a network switch and then we'll come back and, and change that to a different device category. This sometimes happen when, happens when we have a device that represents essentially a kind of a new device than we've already got uh, listed in the system here. For right now, I'll leave this uh, as a network switch and we'll come back and change it later. Uh, I'll leave all the other defaults on here just as we did last time. But now, uh, let's go into our device category and we'll add a new name. We'll call it Network Load Balancer and we'll, uh, we'll just give it kind of a standard default icon there. Now with that I can now come in and go and search my Big IP 34. Ah, balancers. We've already got a we've already got a uh, category for this, so I can I can use either that existing category that uh, that I didn't see before, um, or we can go and uh, use the one that we just created down here, network load balancer. So uh, it doesn't really matter either way. Uh, either one is fine. So I'll use that network load balancer and go back to my OEMs and do my rediscovery. So let's go back and find that F5. Here he is right here. We'll go and click on our binoculars and do a rediscovery and see how we do. Awesome. So F5 labs, big IP 3400. That's what I was looking for. So we can uh, click on our reset button here. Our category is updated, subclass is updated, so everything uh, looks just about right. Now if I do a search for F5, here he is right here, and he's got that same update that, uh, that we saw earlier, updating device class with new, uh, with new type. So that's about as, uh, as easy as it is, guys, to, uh, to change all of these OEMs on your system into, um, into your own uh, accurate device classes, depending upon who the vendor is. Now I will say uh, that um, this router that we see here this guy, if we take a look at him also, I think we're going to find out he's another 2911. The nice thing is that uh, tonight when uh, Nightly Rediscover takes place and all these devices are rediscovered, then uh, these devices will all be reclassified if they fit any of those new device classes that I just defined. So I hope this was helpful. See you again in the next video.